I think South Australia has been fortunate to have a set of progressive reformers as, as leaders. You know, you think to Don Dunstan, Lynn Arnold, uh, Mike, Mike Rann and, and, and the, the current government as well. Uh, I think Jay thinks, thinks hard about the distribution of income and about fi placing fairness not as a peripheral issue but as a, an issue that's, that's central to what the government does. Uh, and that doesn't, governments can't change everything, but they can uh, make, uh, have an impact. Uh, and South, South Australia's been fortunate in, in that uh, the egalitarian ethos of progressive parties, and maybe also we ought to give a little bit of credit to the Conservatives. Uh, if there's one place where noblesse oblige seems to retain a, a little foothold, uh, it's probably more so in the, the right in South Australia uh, than in other cases where the, the ideology of, of Thatcher and Reagan seems to have more strongly dominated uh, the conservative side of politics. Good sport involves making sure that people have, have the same starting point. So uh, the Kentucky Derby in the, in the US is, I think, a, a less interesting race than the Melbourne Cup, partly because the Melbourne Cup places lead in the saddlebags, so it's pretty unpredictable who's going to win. Uh, AFL is a more redistributive game than English Premier League, uh, much more equal sharing of the TV revenues, uh, use of, uh, of, of uh, salary caps and player drafts to make sure that talent is, is evenly shared across. And as a result, AFL is, I think, a, a more unpredictable game than English Premier League. You know, you have Man U that's, that's won more than half the championships over the last two decades. Uh, by contrast, in AFL, no team's won more than three prem premierships over the last two decades. Uh, and the story of the Crows in the late 1990s is classic rags to riches to rags. Um, that makes for uh, a great outcome for, uh, from a spectator's point of view, uh, if maybe not for, uh, for South, uh, the, the point of view of South Australians with their heart in their mouths. And illustrates, I think, that while we might not want to put lead in the saddlebags in the race of life, we probably do want to think about providing a pair of shoes to the kid who's currently uh, about to run barefoot, uh, starting 10 metres behind the starting line. I think there's an enormous amount of luck in terms of uh, the uh, circumstances of your birth. Uh, you know, I was fortunate to have two, or am fortunate to have uh, a couple of extraordinary parents and, uh, and to grow up in comfortable circumstances uh, in one of the richest nations in the world uh, at an extraordinarily affluent time in human history. Uh, by contrast, if I'd been born a few thousand years ago, uh, what would have mattered is my poor eyesight and my slight build, which might well have seen me uh, eaten by a saber-toothed tiger somewhere on the savannah. Uh, and, and so that's, that's luck. I mean, Warren Buffett has talked about this, about the fact that his particular talents for money management uh, would have essentially brought no returns just a few hundred years earlier, uh, but now have made him you know, one of the richest people in, uh, in, in the history of the world. And so we ought to recognise the role of, of luck in, uh, in success uh, and those of us who've been fortunate uh, need to recognise that that provides an obligation uh, to assist those who haven't been as fortunate. Uh, this is not as good a time to be uh, uh, an inarticulate bloke uh, who's good with his hands looking for a job uh, as it was a generation ago. Uh, and that's not the fault of any of those individuals and public policy has to recognise that. Absolutely. Um, and I think there's, uh, it's important that you maintain a set of passions and ideals, but they have to be about the ends, not the means. Uh, I worked uh, for a summer in the US for the Progressive Policy Institute, which is doing train, training for 
uh, potential state legislators in the US and they'd get them to talk about what they're passionate about and they'd say oh I'm, I'm passionate about Medicare or I'm passionate about Social Security or I'm uh, passionate about the uh, subsidy program for, uh, for, for low skill inner city youth and the Democrats who are running this would say no 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 they're, they're programs they're not values tell us the values you're passionate about and we'll start from there and then you can you can see which programs you want you, you want to you want to support, uh, but we ought to always be as progressives. I think be scientific and critical about the ability of any individual program to make the world world a better place. Uh, we do the most vulnerable no favors by tying ourselves blindly to uh, to particular policies. Uh, there are great social programs and lousy social programs, and progressives need to be in the business of uh, of sorting one from the other. I think it's vital because ultimately you, are, you can only, through direct conversations, be in touch with a tiny slice of the human condition. And what novelists, great novelists, allow you to do is to, is to tap into a broader, broader swath of the human spirit. Uh, I don't read as many novels as I'd like to, but I was struck recently by a, a piece in the New York Times which was uh, looking at the effect that Harry Potter has uh, on attitudes of young Americans uh, and young, Euro young Europeans uh, towards minorities and saying that those who've read Harry Potter uh, are much more likely to be sensitive towards uh, refugees and towards uh, gay, and, gay and lesbian classmates uh, and essentially making the argument that a lot of Harry Potter is about developing a sense of empathy to those who are mistreated for factors that are outside their control, the, the, uh, the, the, the scathing, you know, sort of referring to people as mudbloods and all, all, that, and all that sort of thing. And it's, a, it's one little illustration of how fiction can help uh, make us better people. Who's your favourite novelist? Wow, who am I enjoying at the moment? I, I like Ian McEwan. Um, I, uh, the early stuff more than the later stuff. Tim Winton, I think, is clearly our, our kind of national uh, uh, sort of storyteller. And, I, and actually, I, I've only probably spent all up about three or four months in Western Australia. So really, w what I see when I go to Western Australia is Tim Winton landscapes. Every, every, Tim, Tim Winton seems to, seems to be WA for me. <laughs> It's hard to go past President Obama, I think, uh, in terms of somebody who has uh, taken some chances uh, and made a difference for the uh, not just uh, racial relations but also the kind of dignity of public debate in the United States. Uh, it's Obama's misfortune that he's come to office at a time when American politics is as fractious and polarised as, as it's ever been in the last couple of hundred years. Uh, but I think he's, he's, a, he's a model in terms of how to uh, articulate an, uh, an argument, the, kind of the cool dis disposition and the willingness to not shy away from complexity, to, to use a, a speech, for example, to uh, answer the... Uh, uh, Josiah Wright critique during the 2008 campaign was was pretty impressive to me. Uh, I mean, the fact that Labor didn't control uh, the House of Representatives from 2010 to 2013 was was particularly unusual. Uh, it wasn't that unusual that President Obama didn't control Congress. Uh, well, in the first 2008 to 2010, he wasn't veto-proof, wasn't filibuster-proof in the Senate, uh, and then he, uh, he he lost the House from 2010. Uh, that was that's you know, pretty normal for U.S. presidents. It was very abnormal for Julia Gillard not mm. to control the House, and the circumstances of of the the broken promise around a carbon tax, I think, were. Uh, brutally fatal uh, in ways that I certainly didn't anticipate at the, uh, at the outset.